We're back, uh, back here on a special edition. We pushed this week's episode. Yes. To next week. Yes. Because we have something we have to talk about. We do. Besides my beard. Yes. Besides my beard. You've been watching a lot of like Viking documentaries. A lot of Vikings. Actually, my daughter has. My dog. My daughter's been watching Vikings, and she wanted to give Daddy, as she said, the fat Thor beard. Yep. So I was. I appreciated that. I mean, it's fat Chris Hemsworth. That's yep. kind of a compliment still. Even to a larger man, you still look like a fat, good-looking guy. So she's not calling you fat? No. but Okay. Well, she, she, she's she drawing is. comparison. She is, but it's like, I'm not Thor Ragnarok. I'm, I'm you know, yeah. I'm endgame. And that's all right. I'm content with that. He still looks good. So, But that's not what we're here to talk about today. No. We that's are just here. a preview. That's like a pre-show. It's like a yep. game within a game type thing. You know? this That was a show within a show. But we're going to talk about something else. Uh, the Queen is dead. Long live, live the, the king. king. Yep. King Charles. I'm assuming he won't change his name. No. Not, Some monarchs used to do that. They would change yeah. their names. Um, like, uh, what's his name? George, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Queen Elizabeth's dad was Arthur, wasn't he? Yep. And that was too German sounding, as Winston Churchill said. So well, yeah. choose a more English name. They're in the process of kind of ing- ingl- anglophiling <laughs> right. their name anyways. So. Right, right, right. So now you have... Queen Elizabeth, who was the longest reigning. Yep. Yep. Died at 96 Monarch, years old. 96 years old. Coronated in 1953. 19, I mean, so much. I mean, the history, the history I have with the queen is, I think the earliest memory I have of her is Princess Diana's funeral. So that's, I was probably around 12 years mm-hmm. old, maybe when that happened. And she was very, if, if you've, remember watching Princess Diana's funeral, it was very contemporary in nature. Yep. He had Elton John take his, his song Candle in the Wind, which was originally inspired by Marilyn Monroe. Mm-hmm. Um, and he changed the words instead of Norma Jean to English Rose. Yep. And it was now a song attributed to Princess Diana. And that was huge. I remember that was like number one on the charts again. Yep. My mom had the uh, the Princess Diana beanie baby. Right. Yeah. She was a big fan. Big yep. fan of Princess Diana. Well, and everyone. I mean, she was this 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 amazing woman. The people's princess. Yeah. And but you could see the difference between the two. You could see Diana's it was a very modern type funeral. And then you had this ancient woman show up. And with the ancient, it was always seen as, like, dark and grim. Mm -hmm. But then you had the royal wedding come up with William. And he was never seen as this dark, grim figure. Well, both of the brothers are are full of life. Yeah, very joyful guys. And But his wedding was extremely liturgical. Yep. They had the Bishop of London do the sermon from the pulpit in the vestments. You had everything done, the hymnody. And all of that. And then even Harry's wedding was the same. Very yep. liturgically minded. And it hit me as we're looking now. You'll probably see it in the next week, I'm assuming. Yeah, we'll see a funeral. Funeral, a funeral. probably in the next week. And then I would imagine the next, normally six months, they'll have, yeah. we'll have a coronation. We'll have a coronation. So and he's he, already king. Already king, but he'll be coronated he'll be then. Coronated, yeah, within the next six months. So you're going to see two very liturgical services. Mm-hmm. The funeral and then the coronation. Yeah, broadcast to the entire world. Yeah. Probably, it'll be, pro- I would dare say, more watched than the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. It's, By far. I mean, I'm going to watch it. Yeah. I'm going to watch the funeral. I'm going to watch the coronation. Yeah, I'm not British. More Scottish than Brit- than English. But the reality is this is a, a long-standing monarch. Yeah. And it's it's one of our allies as well mm-hmm. in everything. Yeah. Um, but it's in. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, no, yeah. I mean, an entire generation of people has been. We were talking about this earlier. An entire generation of people has been born. Yep. And died within her reign. Yeah. Uh, and it's not like oh, a short a generation cut short. No, an entire generation. Yeah. A 70, 70 plus year reign is yeah. insane to think of. It's crazy. And what comes down through the generations is the church's liturgy. Mm-hmm. Now, they're not Lutherans, mm-hmm. Anglican, yep. but if you look at the Anglican form of worship, is very similar to our Lutheran mm-hmm. worship. Um, the guy who really created, and I'm probably wrong, but I, I don't know how many liturgical Nazis we have watching our, our podcast, hopefully not too many, um, but you have Thomas Cramner, who's that Archbishop of Canterbury who starts writing liturgies, mm-hmm. and a lot of the early Anglican liturgies are heavily influenced by 
the Lutheran Church yep. by uh, t- Philip Melanchthon, Martin mm-hmm. Bucer, people like that. And now you don't really see really good liturgy done amongst Lutherans mm-hmm. anymore. You really have like two Lutheran churches. You have Bronze Age guys, so you have like it's the traditional service. Yep. The guy speaks it, we sing it, and that's about it. The pastor kind of knows what he's doing, but he fumbles through it a little bit. So you have that. That's the traditional. The sacred 5 and 15. Yeah, 5, 15, TLA. And Don't then come have, at us in the comments. <clears throat> no, and if you do, that's fine. We'll, we'll argue back with you. Um, and then you have the contemporary. Mm-hmm. And then you have this small group that's kind of like higher things. Yep. That is higher things. You know, it's not just higher things, but other groups in our church body, the Godestines crowd, people like like that, that just do liturgy the way we've always done it. This mm-hmm. isn't something new we came up with. Yep. When you go to a higher things conference or retreat and you do evening prayer, vespers, matins, the divine service, these are liturgies that are hundreds of years old yep. that we've always done. And when you see it, it's this phenomenal thing. Um, and you're going to see this on a grand scale at the funeral and at and the coronation. very ornate skill. Yeah. I mean, it's going to make stuff that... I mean, would you think a Higher Things Divine Service is awesome? Mm-hmm. And out there, this is going to be... Yeah, I mean, the highest like of high steroids. church. Yeah. yeah. You're going to have all the copes. The copes are those big capes. You know, you're going to have the hats, the miters. You're going to have the <clears throat> the chanting. You're going to have mm-hmm. all these things. Um, it'll be interesting to see who preaches for it. Most of the time, it's the Archbishop of Canterbury who mm-hmm. preaches. He's the head of the Church of England. Yep, I, I would assume that he would do both. I would assume, yeah, he'll probably yeah. do both. Sometimes it can be another person if chosen. Like for Harry's wedding, it was uh, an Episcopalian pastor from mm-hmm. America that preached. Yep. For Williams, it was the Bishop of London because that was his pastor. Yep. Um, and that can happen. But most of the time, you're going to get Archbishop yep. of Canterbury. So... I think what we can look forward to as Lutherans with it is just seeing some amazing liturgy. Yeah. And I mean, and li- living in the moment of, of history. Yeah. Like, I, I think that's one of the things, like, as an Anglo, self-processed Anglophile. Yes. Or self-professed Anglophile. Like, that's one of the most exciting things for me is, like, watching all of this occur. Yeah. Um, and living in the moment of it because, like, my grandma, she was, she watched... Uh, the coronation on television when she was a kid. Right, right, right. Um, and unfortunately, she hasn't, she or she won't be able to watch this, but at the same time, like, your kids yeah, will get to see this happen, and then they'll eventually also get to see the death and coronation of... Yeah, I mean, they'll get the to see too, and, yeah. because, like, Charles, he's in his 70s, he'll probably yeah. pass, and you'll, well, he will pass, all of us do. Uh, but sooner than his mother did in yeah, the rain. Yeah, for sure. And then you have William come up, so they'll witness all these things. And I, I just say soak it up, enjoy it, watch it, mm-hmm. you know? Um, don't, I mean, and, and maybe rejoice in the similarities we have yep. in it. So it'll be interesting to see what colors they use. Some, like, for Lutherans in funerals, it's always the liturgical color of the season. Yep. So, like, if someone died this weekend at a funeral, I would wear green vestments, and we'd have green pyramids. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people will actually go to black or purple yep. for a funeral. Purple is a mark of penitence. Black is a sign of death. Sometimes they'll do that. I always wonder about that. If we were going to do something for a funeral, we'd do white instead. Yeah, white I was actually thinking about that. I could Easter. see them doing for... for Because she just celebrated Diamond Jubilee. Yeah. Like, I could see them doing uh, white and gold. Yeah. And, and that's the funny part about pyramids and vestments. We like to think these were handed down by Jesus to the apostles in Matthew 28, but it wasn't. I mean, <laughs> not that it doesn't matter, but yeah. it's not like, okay, there's this one way of doing it and everyone else is wrong. So what you're saying is we won't see tie-dye vestments. Oh, no, I don't think you will. But that'd be pretty funny if you did. That'd be a the great... vestments that look like LaCroix cans. Yeah. So, but... uh <laughs> But I'm looking forward to watching. I think Patty Boy and I are going to watch it together. Yep. Wear our hats. Yep. Eat our cucumber sandwiches. Yes. Yeah, actually, we do both enjoy Scottish shortbread cookies. We do. So we love them. May have to dearly. eat those while we watch it. For sure. So I'm All into right. that. I'm into that. All right. Fun that's times, our episode man. for the week. A short one discussing uh, the death of Queen Elizabeth II. Uh, the Queen is dead. Long, Long live, live the king. king. There you go. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Uh, check us out. Higherthings.org. Uh, We'll see you next week for our regularly scheduled episode where we discuss student loan forgiveness. Fun times.
That's a great episode, and we'll check you here uh, in a couple of weeks for a brand new episode. Stay tuned. We'll see you then.